Hello and welcome to the 10x Health course, The Basics of Musculoskeletal Ultrasound. To receive credit for this course, please make sure to watch the video completely and pass the quiz with a 90% grade or better. You can download this presentation by clicking on the Additional References tab located on this module's page. Once you have successfully completed this module, you can download your certificate of completion by clicking on the Achievements tab located to the left of your 10x Academy home screen. The objectives of this course are simple. First, we will discuss how ultrasound works and how it's used. This will encompass the mechanics of ultrasound and its associated terminology. Next, we will discuss how ultrasound interacts with various tissues of the body. Finally, we will look at real ultrasound images and videos so you can practice recognizing the anatomy and other imagery components of an ultrasound examination. Now let's get started. A signal or ultrasonic sound waves are sent from a source, in this case the transducer probe, toward an object. The sound waves are generated somewhere between 2 and 20 megahertz, which cannot be heard by the human ear. For context, audible sound waves are between 20 and 20,000 hertz. The sound waves will bounce off the object and return to a receiver. Depending on the transmission ability of an object, the sound waves may transmit through some areas of the object or reflect back in others. This allows the receiver to provide information to the computer to formulate an image of the object. Ultrasound has been used throughout the 20th century by submarines and boats to locate objects in the water or on the seabed. You may have seen ultrasound being used to locate fish if you've ever been on a fishing trip. Ultrasound imaging became popularized for medical use in the 1950s. One of the main benefits of ultrasound is that it does not produce harmful radiation like x-rays or CT scans. Because ultrasound waves creates a pulsed frequency, it was discovered that you can apply that energy to a probe or needle to remove disease or dead tissue. One such procedure that uses ultrasonic energy to remove diseased tissue is ultrasound phacoemulsification or cataract removal of the eye. 10X leveraged this technology for its use in its TX system. This will be covered in more detail in the 10X Health Overview course. The ability to differentiate between two objects perpendicular to the ultrasound beam is dependent on the width of the beam at a given depth, such as the case when trying to visualize the 10X microtip under ultrasound imaging. The image is only one millimeter in width as it comes off the transducer. Resolution can be optimized by placing the target structure in the focal zone or narrow plane, which is the narrowest portion of the ultrasound beam with the highest intensity. The image on the left of your screen shows the focal zone. This is where the best visualization occurs. The image on the right shows a percutaneous tenotomy using the TX system being performed for lateral epicondylitis. When this is done, the examiner can place the TX2 microtip outside of the footprint of the transducer. This makes it easier to identify the probe and the long axis view directed to the pathology. Now let's go over some of the advantages of ultrasound. Ultrasound use in medicine has many advantages. They can be very portable and a low-cost imaging alternative. It is a non-invasive examination, meaning there is no ionizing radiation involved, making it a very safe imaging alternative for the patient. Ultrasound imaging is also very easy to perform and can be done in the doctor's office. Once the user becomes familiar with how to view the ultrasound images, it can be an easy to learn procedure. To expand how ultrasound waves transmit or reflect, Let's discuss how sound waves interact with certain body components. Ultrasound waves will totally transmit through fluid and air. This is called hypoechoic or free from echo. This means the image will be dark or black. When ultrasound interacts with bone, the waves will be hyperechoic or providing high echo. And the image will be bright white while everything behind the bone will be very dark or gray as some sound waves may penetrate through the bone depending on its density. When ultrasound interacts with soft tissues such as muscle, tendon, or fat, the image will have shades of gray or white depending on the density of the tissue.
Now that you have a good idea of how fluid, tissue, and bone appear with ultrasound imaging, let's take a look at some of these from the image on your screen. At the right of the image, you can see the shape of the TX needle, which appears hyperechoic, or white. Remember, hyperechoic means that the ultrasonic waves do not transmit through a dense object such as bone or metal. The healthy tendon tissue is grayish in appearance. The hypoechoic, or dark area, noted at the tip of the needle is the diseased tendon that will be removed. You can also see the bone of the lateral epicondyle and the radial head, which are hyperechoic and appear white. Now let's watch a video that shows live ultrasound examination being performed on an elbow and see if you can recognize the hyperechoic and hypoechoic features. So on the right side of the screen you see the radial head, you see the joint space, and then on the left side of the screen the bony landmark in a very hyperechoic, excuse me, fashion, you see the epicondyle, lateral epicondyle. And on the top part of that, at the crest of the epicondyle, you can see some regions of disease as demonstrated by hypoechoic focal area. You have thinning of the tendon tissue. If you can unfreeze that, and we can go back with the exam. Again, we're doing a longitudinal exam with the framework of identifying the radial head, the joint space, and the capitellum of the epicondyle. And as I move up proximally, I can see the contour of the epicondyle again, and there is the disease that's showing up as a hypoechoic area. In summary, and most importantly, the term hypoechoic refers to structures that lack echo and ultrasound waves transmit through tissues. Fluids, fats, and disease tissue are hypoechoic and will show up dark or black on an ultrasound image. Hyperechoic means ultrasound waves do not readily pass through the structure, giving a bright white appearance on an ultrasound image, such as bone and metal. Healthy tissue will appear gray or a mixture of dark and white. Knowing these common terms and the concepts that align with them, you should be able to view ultrasound images with a better understanding of what you're looking at. We hope you have gained new knowledge and insights into ultrasound how it works, and how to differentiate between various anatomy with ultrasound imaging. Please be sure to complete the short quiz to achieve credit for this course.